NetApp used to offer fiber channel disc shelves with the controller connected to the shelf through a fiber channel port and cable. The fiber channel disc shelves have, however, been end of life for some time. The current models are SAS disc shelves, which stands for Serial Attached SCSI, meaning the controller connects to the shelf through a SAS port and cable. NetApp offer three types of discs to fit into the shelves, SSD solid state drives, SAS HDD and SATA HDD hard disk drives. All three types of disks fit into the SAS disk shelves. Okay, so there's no such thing as an SSD disk shelf or a SATA disk shelf. The disk shelves are always SAS, meaning they're connected to the controller with a SAS cable. But those SAS shelves can take the SSD, the SAS, and the SATA type drives. Of those three drive types, SSD drives offer the best performance, but they've got the highest cost per gigabyte of storage. Our SATA drives, which you'll see are listed as high capacity drives on the NetApp website, they offer the lowest performance, but they've got the lowest cost per gigabyte. And finally, our SAS drives offer a balanced performance and cost per gigabyte. I could have made up some slides to show you the disk shelves that are available, but NetApp have done a really good job of that on their website. So let's look there now. So here we are on the www.netapp.com website. And the place we go to find out hardware and software information is on the products menu on the top. So I hover my mouse over there and you can see all that full information. What we're interested in for this lesson is disk shelves and storage media. So let's look there. We land on the overview page, which gives us some general information. We want more details, so I'm going to click on the compare page. And you can see this page shows us the four models of shelf that are currently available. The DS for disk shelf 2246, 4246, 4486 and 4243. We can glean some information about the shelf from the model number. The first digit is how many rack units it is. So the 2246 is two rack units, the 4246, 4486 and 4243 are all larger four rack units in size. The next two digits in the model number are how many drives are supported per shelf. So the 4486 can take 48 drives per shelf, the 2246, 4246 and 4243 all take 24 drives per shelf. And the last digit in the part number tells us the SAS bus speed. So the 4243 runs at dual 3 gigabits per second, the other shelves all run at 6 gigabits per second. Then we can get information about the different types of drives that are supported. High capacity HDDs are our SATA drives, and you can see that they're supported in all the different shelves apart from the 2246. Our performance HDDs are the SAS drives, they're supported in only the 2246. And ultra performance SSDs are obviously our SSDs. Now, notice that we've got this pure and mixed or mixed only. That's talking about flash pool when we talk about mixed only, which is going to be covered in a later lesson, so don't worry about it yet. Pure means that it's all SSDs in that shelf, and that's only supported in the 2246. To drill down into deeper information, we can click on the Tech Specs page. This gives us fuller information, including the capacities of drives that are supported. So you can see our high capacity SATA drives go from two terabytes up to six terabytes, and they run at 7200 
RPM. Our SAS drives are available at 600 and 900 gigabytes and 1.2 terabytes, and they run at 10K RPM. And our solid state drives are available in sizes from 200 gigabytes up to 1.2 terabytes. And if I scroll down on this page, I can get detailed environmental information. Also notice that all the drives have got redundant power supplies in them. Next, let's look at the disk shelves. This is our two rack unit disk shelf, which is the DS2246. It takes up to 24 disks, which are fitted into the shelf vertically at the front here. They are hot swappable. Over on the left, we've got the, the shelf ID indicator. With your shelves, you can have up to 10 shelves in a stack. For the numbering, the first stack starts at zero, the next stack starts at 10 and then 20 and so on. And there's a panel over here on the left where you can set the shelf ID. So that's our two rack unit shelf. Moving on to our four rack unit shelf, so that's the DS4246, 4486, and 4243. So it's double the size, and you see the slots for our discs here are arranged horizontally. Looking at the back of our disc shelves, this is the DS2246 first. So we've got redundant power supplies down at the bottom, and then on top we've got our I.O. modules. In the I.O. module, it's got two Ethernet ports for the ACP connection and two SAS ports. We have two I.O. modules because we need to have enough ports there to connect to both controllers for high availability. The back of the 4U disc shelves is very similar. We've got two I.O. modules again with the same amount of ports on there. They are arranged top and bottom in the shelf and we've got four slots for power supplies. Next, let's see how to do the cabling between our controllers and our disc shelves. So the example here is for a high availability pair, two controllers with two quad part SAS HBAs, and we've got two stacks of disk shelves. When we do the cabling, it's split up into doing it in different sections to simplify it. So the first thing we do is we daisy chain our SAS ports. So section one here. If we look back at the shelves, notice that for both the ACP connections and the SAS connections, they're labeled with a square and a circle. That's important for when we do the cabling. So the first part of the cabling we do is daisy chaining down our SAS ports. On the top shelf in the stack, on IO module A, we connect the circle SAS port to the square port below. And then we daisy chain down like that, going circle to square, circle to square, all the way down through the stack. So we do that on IO module A, and we do the same thing on IO module B as well. And we also do that for stack two. Next, we're ready to cable our controllers to our stacks. So part two. Here, on a spare SAS port on controller one, it gets connected to the top square SAS port on stack one. And then on another SAS port on controller one, it gets connected to the, again, the top square port on IO module A on stack two. And similarly, on controller two, we connect a SAS port to the top square SAS port on IO module B. We do that on both stack one and on stack two. So that was the top SAS connections from the controllers. Next up, part three, we cable the bottom SAS connections. This is what gives us our multipath high availability. If we lose any of the ports or the cables or the shelves in the stack, we can still get to all of the other shelves. So for this, on another SAS port on controller one, it gets connected down to the circle port on IO module B 
in the bottom shelf in the stack. We do that on stack one and on stack two. And from controller two, we take a SAS port and we cable it to the bottom circle port on IO module A on stack one and stack two. And once we've done that, we've completed the SAS cabling. All we have left to do is our ACP connections. So for ACP, that uses an ethernet port. So from controller one, we've got an ethernet cable going into a port there, and then that gets connected to the top square ACP port on IO module A on stack one. Then we daisy chain down on the ACP connections, circle to square, circle to square, down to the bottom shelf in the stack. And then on the bottom shelf, we connect from the circle ACP port up to the top square ACP port on IO module B on stack one. Then we daisy chain down through IO module B, circle to square, circle to square again. And then from the bottom circle ACP port on stack one, on IO module B, we connect up to the top square ACP port on IO module A on stack two. Then we cable up the same way as we did on stack one. So we daisy chain down and then back up to IO module B and then daisy chain down again. And finally, from the bottom circular ACP port on IO module B on stack two, we connect up to an ethernet port on controller two. Now, all of that probably looked a little bit complicated. So you'll be glad to hear that as usual, the NetApp documentation is really good for this. So let's have a look at that. Here I am back on the NetApp documentation site. You saw this earlier when I showed you the documentation for data on tap eight. Now I want to see the documentation for the controllers. So I'll scroll down to F and there you'll see the documentation for all of the different FAS controllers. And let's take a look at an example. Here I've opened up the setup and installation guide for the FAS 8020. It's great, it's only four pages long, so it's really concise. I'm on page two here, and you can see it shows me how to do my various cabling options. Now, with the FAS 2500, you can have a single controller system. With the 2520, you can go up to four nodes, and on the 2552 and 2554, you can go up to eight nodes. On our 8000 series platforms, you can start off at two nodes and you can go up to eight nodes if you're running SAN protocols. If you're only running NAS protocols, you can go up to 24 nodes. So if you've only got two nodes in your cluster, then maybe you're not going to want to have those external cluster interconnect switches. You know, you've only got two nodes, why do you need to have external switches? Why can't you just connect them directly to each other? And yes, you can do that. So that's what you see in option A here. It's a two node switchless cluster. We've only got two nodes in our cluster and we've got them directly connected to each other. The documentation makes it really easy and clear to see what gets cabled up where. We've got the, the green cables here is for the cluster interconnect directly between the two controllers, not going through a switch. If we had more than two nodes in our cluster, then we're going to need those external physical switches for the cluster interconnect. It also shows you here about what ports are going to go to your, your data network, what ports are going to be used for management. And if I scroll a little further down, it shows you how to cable everything up if you've got the switch configuration using those external cluster interconnect switches. And further down on the next page, it also shows us how to cable up our disk shelves. NetApp have got system and installation guides for all the different models of controller. So if you're going to be deploying one of these, download that guide from the NetApp website and it will show you exactly how to cable everything up.